Number 11. India's Hanging Pillar Lepakshi Temple in Andhra Pradesh, India is considered a marvel of ancient Indian architecture. The 16th century structure is filled with statues of gods, goddesses, musicians, and dancers. Hundreds of paintings depicting scenes from Hindu epics cover the walls, columns, and ceiling. There are around 70 stone pillars supporting the roof of the temple's dance hall. Legend has it that they were designed to withstand earthquakes. One of the pillars doesn't even touch the ground, but instead hangs from the ceiling. There is a wafer-thin gap between its base and the floor, where a sheet of paper or cloth can easily pass through, creating an incredible illusion that the pillar is floating. Nobody knows how or why the pillar is situated like this, although many have tried to figure it out. According to one story, a British engineer supposedly moved the pillar in an attempt to understand what supports it. In doing so, he dislodged the pillar, leaving it in its current position. Another legend claims that members of the British government tried to move the pillar to do some repairs, but realized it wasn't possible. Consequently, it was left the way it remains today. There's no telling which, if either story is true, and the hanging pillar continues to fascinate visitors at the Lipakshi Temple, which is famous for its ornate architecture and beautiful artwork. Number 10. Viking Twilight Compass as the Vikings sailed through the North Atlantic along the 1,600-mile journey from Norway to Greenland, they navigated using an ancient compass called the Unertak Disk. Measuring just 2.76 inches in diameter, the small wooden partial disk was discovered in an 11th-century covenant in Greenland in 1948. It was originally thought to be a decoration or a sundial, but in 2014, researchers performed tests that revealed that it could have been used as a nighttime compass called a twilight board. By using the Unartok disc in combination with other instruments, the Vikings would have been able to navigate for nearly an hour after sunset around the time of the spring equinox. They would have needed a pair of stones called sunstones, which determined the sun's position, and something called a shadow stick, which identified their cardinal direction. Neither of these items were discovered along with the Unartok disc, but medieval records indicate that sunstones and shadow sticks were available to the Vikings, making this nighttime navigation theory entirely plausible. Number 9. Hypocost the earliest known form of central heating was developed over 2,000 years ago in ancient Rome. Known as the Hypocaust, the system was powered by furnaces that burned constantly. Homes that were equipped with a Hypocaust were built two feet off the ground. The furnaces were installed beneath, and hot air circulated through the space beneath the house. As the hot air cooled, it escaped the building through flues in the walls and roof vents. In addition to providing warmth, Hypocost systems were also used for creating saunas by putting a pool into the room. The furnace heated the water, causing steam to rise up into the air. The room's temperature easily reached 100 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, with the humidity peaking at 100%. Allowing smoke from a Hypocost to leak into a house would have put a home's occupants at risk of carbon monoxide poisoning. The Romans were careful to ensure that this didn't happen. Hypocost systems were built by skilled engineers who knew what they were doing. But making sure they were safe also meant they were expensive, and only the wealthy could usually afford one for their home. They were more commonly used in bathhouses, which functioned as major social centers in ancient Rome. Number 8. The First Robot most people only think of robots in a modern sense, but their history dates back to over 2,000 years to the Flying Pigeon, a self-propelled steam-powered device that was created between 400 and 350 BC. It was the invention of an ancient Greek scientist and philosopher named Archytas, who was a good friend of Plato. Archytas is credited with being the founder of mathematical mechanics, or what we now call mechanical engineering, and he designed the Flying Pigeon as part of a study on how birds fly. 
The steam-powered RoboBird was made from wood and suspended from a pivot bar. It had a hollow and cylindrical lightweight body with two sets of wings, along with an airtight heated boiler in its rear. The boiler generated steam and pressure which eventually defeated the machine's mechanical resistance and caused it to take flight. The Flying Pigeon traveled for nearly 660 feet before running out of steam, making it the first ever self-propelled flying device and in some sense, the world's earliest robot. The experiment also marked one of the first known recorded instances of a scientist studying bird flight. And while the mechanics behind it are rather simple, the Flying Pigeon was considered highly advanced at the time of its creation. Hey, real quick, if you're new to the channel, welcome! Give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more cool videos like this. Number 7. Ulfbert's Sword Between 800 and 1000 AD, the Vikings manufactured a lightweight, razor-sharp, and flexible sword that appears to have been made with technology that wasn't readily available until some 800 years later. Around 170 of the swords, all of them engraved with the word Ulfbert, have been found. They were made from iron ore that had to be heated to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit to remove impurities. To strengthen the metal, it was mixed with carbon, effectively turning it into steel. At the time, people had no way of heating something to such a high temperature. The technology to do this wasn't available on a large scale until the 19th and 20th centuries, during the Industrial Revolution. Instead, people usually hammered the impurities out of their swords. But the Vikings somehow found a way to create swords that had no impurities and contained three times more carbon than any other metals at the time. Known as crucible steel, the mixture was likely made in the Kingdom of Francia, near modern-day France and Germany. But the identity of the sword maker is a mystery, and the exact process they use for making crucible steel is unknown. Researchers believe they may have borrowed techniques from Arab blacksmiths who made similar high-quality material called Damascus steel. The swords may have also been made using steel imported from India or the Arab empires. Number 6. Roman Concrete Modern concrete is the world's most widely used building material. It's been around since the 18th century and is a relatively simple mixture containing cement, water, sand, and rocks. Ancient Persians, Egyptians, Assyrians, and Romans all favored their own versions of concrete. It was especially popular in the Roman Empire, which is credited with perfecting the material. Roman concrete is extremely resilient. Some of the structures they built with it are still standing today, over 1,000 years after the empire fell. This is pretty impressive, especially considering how modern concrete can break down in as little as 50 years. Scientists found that philipsite and another incredibly rare mineral called aluminum tobimerite had formed in the concrete where volcanic ash had dissolved, causing the material to strengthen over time. The Romans may have poured salt water into the mixture, causing it to react with volcanic ash and produce the strengthening minerals. But this process takes centuries, and scientists have yet to develop a similar but quicker forming solution. Number 5. Lycurgus Cup The Lycurgus Cup is a 4th century Roman chalice that appears jade green when light passes through it from the front, and blood red when illuminated from behind. It's made of dichroic glass, which changes color depending on the way the light strikes it. The 1600-year-old cup is the only complete Roman artifact made from the material, and it displays the most impressive color-changing qualities out of any known artifacts. For decades after the British Museum acquired the cup in the 1950s, scientists struggled to understand the dynamics behind its chameleon effect. They came one step closer to solving the puzzle in 1990, when they examined the glass under a microscope and discovered that it was infused with silver and gold particles that were ground down to less than one thousandth the size of a grain of table salt. The mixture was precise, indicating that the Romans created the chalice's color-changing characteristics on purpose. In this sense, they were early pioneers of nanotechnology. Light causes the electrons in the metal flex to vibrate, transforming the cup's color depending on the viewer's angle. 
Acting on the suspicion that different liquids would also affect the artifact's color, researchers mimicked the technology on a small plastic plate and exposed it to water, oil, sugar, and salt solutions. The plate displayed an array of distinctive shades, meaning that the cup would react similarly if it were put to the same test. Number 4. Automata the mathematician and engineer Heron of Alexandria lived and worked some time between the 1st and 3rd centuries. He invented numerous impressive machines, including the world's first automated vending machine, a coin-operated holy water dispenser, and an organ that was powered by a wind wheel, which was the earliest known wind-powered machine. Heron also developed one of the first robots known as an automaton, one of his first automata was a mobile shrine dedicated to the god Dionysus, featuring figurines of the god and his worshippers. It was situated on a wheeled base which rolled to a specific point and displayed a religious scene using the figurines. Another one of Heron's robots was a miniature theater which featured a tragedy from beginning to end. These machines essentially operated on clockwork by using a descending counterweight and various cords and axles to make the scene unfold. Heron is considered one of the most influential early pioneers of engineering, math, geometry, and physics. His other inventions include an automatic temple door opener, which worked using heat and pneumatics, and a steam engine called the Yalapile, which is perhaps his most famous creation. Number 3. Yakchal Modern refrigeration technology is relatively new. Its very beginnings date back to 1834, and the first refrigerators for home use were made in 1913. It wasn't until the 1930s that they became a common household appliance. But ancient people developed their own ingenious ways of keeping perishables cold as early as 1000 BC. Starting around 400 BC, various civilizations who lived in hotter climates began using what is known as a yakchal. These large dome-shaped devices were made of a special insulating mortar called saruj, which contained sand, clay, egg whites, goat hair, lime, and ash. They cooled the air through evaporation. Yakchals were insulated by walls measuring up to six and a half feet tall, along with cool water that was channeled into the structure. These sophisticated devices kept ice cold year-round, even in scorching hot desert climates. They were equipped with trenches where melted ice water collected and refroze overnight. The ice was used for cooling certain foods on hot days, such as deserts that were traditionally served frozen. These delicacies were not just reserved for royalty, they were available to commoners, thanks to the yakchal being a common household item at the time. Number 2. Hypogeum of Hal Safliani The Hypogeum of Hal Safliani is an ancient complex of underground chambers in Malta. Dating back between 4000 and 2500 BC, it was likely used as a sanctuary and a burial site. It's one of Europe's only known Neolithic necropolises, and some experts believe that it's the world's oldest prehistoric underground temple. The three-level, ornately decorated structure was carved directly into the surrounding limestone. Each chamber was used for a different purpose. There was a temple, a cemetery, and a funeral hall. The Oracle Chamber is perhaps the most fascinating part of the Hypogeum. In this room, words spoken at a normal volume are amplified and can be heard throughout the entire building. The acoustics can be scientifically explained, but researchers struggle to understand why the chamber was built and if the amplifying effect was intentional. Some people believe the chamber may have been used by a prophetic priest called an oracle, possibly to affect people's psyches or to enhance mystical experiences during rituals. Number 1. Flexible Glass The Phoenicians made the first man-made glass, but historians credit the Romans with perfecting the art of glassmaking. Various Roman texts describe the creation of something called vitrum flexile, or flexible glass, during the reign of Tiberius Caesar. It is mentioned in Pliny the Elder's Natural History, as well as the Satyricon. 
Pliny the Elder's encyclopedic description of flexible glass discusses how Tiberius Caesar banned the material to keep the value of precious metals like gold, silver, and copper from plummeting. The author admitted that the story's truthfulness is questionable, but the tale nevertheless spread widely and persisted for a long time. Authored by a man named Petronius, Satyricon's account of flexible glass describe how its inventor demonstrated the technology to Tiberius by throwing a cup on the ground. To the emperor's surprise, it didn't break. It was dented from the impact of hitting the floor, so the glassmaker used a small hammer to reshape it. After learning that the inventor was the only person who knew how to make flexible glass, Tiberius reportedly executed him to ensure that he took the recipe for it to the grave. Modern researchers don't think that flexible glass ever really existed, but they tried to figure out what it would have been made of if it did. For example, if the glassmaker had gotten his hands on some boric oxide, it would have greatly strengthened the material, but this fails to explain the flexibility of the glass. Even if flexible glass was real, there is a very real chance that we'll never know what it was made from since it's so scarcely mentioned in historical records. Thanks for watching. What did you think of this incredible ancient technology? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye.